what is happening, Magnus Science? This was sent to me, and I was told I should check it out, do a reaction. It's Matt Walsh. And he's talking about a new TikTok trend called bed rotting. Let me see how, how would he say it. The new TikTok trend called bed rotting. And I'm sure it's as bad as it sounds. I'm sure it has to do with the left. <laughs> I love watching this dude. All right, so are you ready? Let's check this out. It seems that every week we hear about a new TikTok trend. They always have a different name. They're always annoying and weird in slightly different ways. But the one thing that most of them have in common is that they are very thinly veiled excuses for being lazy. The TikTok okay. community works hard at only one thing, and that is finding new ways to make their laziness seem trendy. And now they have a new one. It's called mm. Bed Rotting. And it's as bad as it sounds. CBS News explains. <laughs> There's a new TikTok trend that could trigger depression in some people, and it's got a rather mm. interesting name. I know. Have you heard of this Bed Rotting? No. It's not something that sounds like something sounds I would want to do, right? Good. But I guess people want to do it. And it's actually the practice of lying in bed for long periods of time, sometimes for days, while binge watching TV or scrolling through social media and eating, of mm. course. So influencers tout it as a form of self-care. But experts say the behavior is more typical of someone who's depressed. Mm. Once again, the experts are on the scene to point out the immensely obvious. Thank God for the experts. What will we ever do without them? <sighs> I will tell you this, it's definitely linked to depression and going through stuff and being stressed out because when Scarlo first moved in, actually no, when she quit her job to pursue being a YouTuber, she was no longer on the stressful schedule that she had been on for years, for years. She's a full grown adult. And I realized that after she quit her job, she was no longer sleeping six, seven, or eight hours a night. Every day, she was sleeping 10 to 11 hours before she would get up and do anything. Now, she didn't bed rot, but she would just sleep that long. It took her months to finally get down to seven or eight, like most of us, six, seven, eight hours, like a lot of us are already on. So I know it's definitely connected to that. Hey, hell, I bed rot it today, probably. Sometimes I get up, I'm on the phone, I'm looking at the TV, and I'm watching different videos. I'll be in the bed for a couple of hours, just on the phone or watching TV before I get out. So if that's self-care, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's, it, if I bed rot too long, I do. If that what bed rot, rotting is, because I don't get out of it. I mean, I don't stay in the bed for like, you know, like five, six hours, seven. And like, it were days, like they're saying. But I think sometimes you may t need to take some time before you get out of the bed just to get your mind ready to tackle the day, but this could definitely turn into a really bad habit. Um, yeah. Um. And we can certainly trust the experts on this one. As it turns out, it is not a healthy practice to become a voluntary invalid. <laughs> Actually, it's no. better for a human, it turns out, to, to, to do things like mm -hmm. move around and walk and um, maybe get some sun on occasion. If you're getting less fresh air and exercise than a prisoner in solitary confinement, that's a pretty good indication that you're making some very poor life choices. There are times when I don't get out of the bed and then I realize that I have wasted time and I did not do everything that I wanted to do for the day. And the cycle has started over again. I've done that for days before where it's like, you know what? I meant to get out of bed earlier so I can handle this and I still didn't do it. So it can be a bad cycle. But then again, how bad can your life choices be if other people are doing the same thing? Have you ever heard of 
bed rotting? Not till today. It's something that I learned about last week, but it's something I've been doing for years off and on. And I didn't <laughs> know it had a name for it. I just thought it was like just depression. And I'm sure you've been doing this too. It's a form of self-care, but you shouldn't do it too often because... I think it's, it's unmotivation, it's demotivation, looking for ins inspiration. Sometimes you're just tired. And all of those can be linked to depression, I know. But sometimes they're not. Uh, so sometimes I'm just trying to figure, what am I going to do for the day? Sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, what videos am I going to do for the day? Sometimes I'll watch videos on YouTube just to figure out what I may want to do for the day. So I, I kind of get this right now. Especially if it's like on a Saturday or something like that. If it's a Saturday or Sunday. I've definitely bed rotted on a Saturday or a Sunday and it's turned bad. You know, you sit you're sitting in the bed for two, three hours watching stuff. You get you can get tired again and go to sleep for two, three, four more hours and you get up your whole day's gone and it's wasted and you feel like a bum. So, you know, hey, you cannot be successful consistently bed rotting. Maybe you can do it a few times. Hey, I've done it. I you know, I'm doing well in life, but you trust, hey, listen, y'all come to me for advice. Don't make a habit of bed rotting. Because apparently it can be laziness. But, but basically it's where you just sit. Could be that too. Lay in bed all day. You can eat snacks, watch Max. <laughs> but some of the girlies, they like high tech and high end version where they like do skincare and some spa treatments. I wouldn't want to do it in the bed. their bed. Like normally in the past, if I stayed in bed all day, I would feel so guilty. But now that I've learned that this is a thing, <laughs> I'm no longer going to feel guilty for bed rotting. <laughs> yes, so uh, why feel guilty for being an unwashed, sedentary bum? There's so many <laughs> other unwashed, sedentary bums, after all. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. How bad can a thing be if it's a thing? These are important philosophical questions, but bed rotting is somehow not the worst, or at least not the most overtly grotesque TikTok laziness trend to gain traction recently. A different but closely related trend is called depression rooms. Mm. And the depression room phenomenon involves TikTokers showing off their cluttered, filthy, bug-infested bedrooms, which have become unsightly garbage heaps because of their depression. That is one of the signs of depression. When you go to somebody's house and it's not clean. That's a sign of other things, but that's one of the signs. If you uh, come to their house and their bedroom's all messy... And you can tell it hasn't been cleaned for days. Um, you know, if you find it hard to make your bed in the morning, stuff like that. If your office is just cluttered, um, you know, stuff like that is a sign of depression. I remember going to a family member's house after a particular family member that lived in the house passed away. And the house was always, when I tell you immaculate, always. I went there a few months after. This other family member had passed away, and you should have seen it. Look, it was in shambles. I could not believe that house looked like that. And I told them, I said, you know, this is a sign of depression. You, know, you guys need to, and I get it. I've been through it myself to where, you know, you have these little bouts that you just don't have it. You, you, you feel uninspired. You feel depressed. You feel sad. Whatever it is you're going through. And you don't feel like cleaning your house. And you just let... And I think as far as I go, I've let it go for possibly around a week. And then I've taken care of it. Because I can't stand clutter. I, I cannot stand it. So, you know, um, you'll notice that some people when they're stressed, they will clean. Because... A lot of times a cluttered room means a cluttered mind. It helps you to straighten your mind out. Sometimes in the video, they'll clean their room and congratulate themselves for performing this basic daily chore for the first time you feel in better. nine months. In other videos, <laughs> um, they make no attempt to clean and they simply just give a tour of the toxic waste dump that they sleep in. Here's uh, one example of the genre. 
I've had a lot of people comment on my room and how messy it is. I'm pretty sure it comes from the aunties who are like, are you proud of this? You're disgusting. How can you let it get like this? I'm not proud of, you know, how messy I let my room get. I think... I'll tell you this, ladies, and I'm going to tell you this, and this is the truth. I don't know if women think like this. They probably do. But if a guy comes to your house and we realize that your room is messy or your house is messy, we think something stinks. We think you keep that as nasty as you keep your house. So keep that in mind. That is very big. I've been to certain houses and I'm like, yep, I'm not touching her. I am not touching her. If you have depression or you suffer from depression or anxiety or any kind of mental health disorder, you understand that sometimes we just can't get up. She just can't. She can't get up. Can't do it. She can record TikTok videos and edit them and post them and scroll the comments <laughs> to see what people are saying about them, but she can't get up and clean her room. And I get it. I get it. I've been there. You know, I've been through losing my parent, my mother, my only parent, really, you know, um, and I know what that feels like. You struggle to even get out of the bed. You struggle to even function in life. And I know a lot of you have been through it, but trust me, you will feel better if you just get out of the bed, make your feet hit the floor and handle what you've been wanting to handle. Make a to-do list and try to get it done. You will feel better as you are getting things done throughout the day, throughout your house, throughout your job, whatever it is you need to do, and you are crossing them off that list. Trust me. She just can't do it until she does it, of course. But the times that she doesn't do it, it's because she simply can't. This is a theme that emerges in many of these videos, uh, like this one. Okay, so I don't want to hear any slander or any hate on this video because I know a lot of you guys, a lot of people in the comments are going to deal with something like this, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek into my life. This is what happens when I get particularly stressed or anxious or depressed. Mm. I cannot clean anything, get organized. I can't do it. I get it. I just can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. She's physically incapable somehow in some way. Again, this is a, this is a theme. By the way, I'm fine. <laughs> I want to clean my room. I know how, how Matt is. Matt is very unforgiving <laughs> in his judgments. He probably has never experienced it, but only heard of it. It's real, man. It's real. <laughs> like I said, mine, I've let it go. Like I said in the past, for about a week. A week. But then I'm like, I, I get it together. And you know, I, I run through. Me personally, in the past, I'm good now. But in the past, I would run through bouts of inspiration and unmotivation. Inspiration. Unmotivation. It happens. <laughs> really really badly i can't and i know some of you are going to understand that some wow. of you are just going to get up and do it just do it if you want to They'll never I let can't. it get that bad never. does anyone know what i mean i can't yeah some of us are going to say get up and do it because that actually is the answer just get yeah, up and do it yeah. stop whining and do it mm -hmm. you can do it you can yeah, you can shut up and do it mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's why your room right. is filled to the brim with useless junk that you bought because you can't clean up after yourself well i saw an old navy shopping bag you somehow managed to go to old navy Against all odds, you figure out how to walk out of your house, get into your car, drive to Old Navy, walk around Old Navy, buy all those clothes with your dad's credit card. You could do that. You weren't too physically immobilized and crippled by your depression to do that thing you wanted to do. And yet when it comes to things you don't want to do, somehow your depression turns into paralysis. What an interesting medical phenomenon. I'm crippled by depression when I don't want to do things. Hmm. Is it depression crippling you or are you just lazy? That's called being lazy. That's like the definition of lazy. Actually, it's not a very interesting phenomenon because, again, you're just lazy. I mean, you may be depressed or you may not be, but one thing you definitely are is lazy. Let me ask you this. Uh, you say that you can't clean your room. What, what if I walked up to you with a giant bag filled with $10 million in cash and I said that I would give it to you if you cleaned your room? You clean that. $10 million right here. I will guarantee it right it'd be done. <laughs> if you clean the room. I bet you'd find a way to do it, wouldn't you? See, this is the difference between things like depression, ADHD, anxiety, and, some, and, and you know something like cancer or diabetes. Because if I offered you $10 million to not have cancer anymore, 
you couldn't take me up on the offer no matter how badly you wanted to. But if I offered you $10 million to no longer be crippled by depression, you would magically find a way. The same goes for ADHD and anxiety and similar quote-unquote mental health disorders. If you feel properly incentivized and interested, you can become a functional human being. Well, no, I've been through anxiety. And I didn't used to believe the people that went through anxiety. You can give me 10 million. If 10 million is not the cause, in other words, the lack of money, if the lack of money is not the cause of my anxiety, it's not going to be cured. It is not going to be cured. I'm telling you, it is not going to happen. It has taken me years to get rid of it and Scarlet years to get rid of it. Um, and it is this clinical anxiety that people get is different from just normal anxiety you may have before taking a test or asking a girl out, going on a date or a big speech or presentation you might have. All that stuff, you know, performance anxiety, you know, you're in a play or maybe other performance anxiety. It's different. And it comes out of nowhere sometimes. You don't know where it came from. And it it's debilitating. I'm telling you, I didn't believe it until I experienced it. And it's in, it's, you know, this is one of those things where people say I wouldn't wish it on my, you know, worst enemy. I mean, I would, I'm just that type of way. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you deal with it now, buddy. Um, but it is, it's not a nice thing. But I, I, you know, I see his point. You know what I mean? Um, depression and anxiety or depression, if we're really speaking about depression, makes it easy to be lazy because it's so, it can be so debilitating. It, it can, it, it can zap your energy. It, it zaps your energy and you're so unmotivated. And when you don't have goal or focus, especially if you don't have a goal or focus in your life, it makes it much easier to be lazy. So, yeah, depression, anxiety, stuff like that, strengthen laziness. You might walk around saying, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm so depressed. And yet, if the incentive was high enough, you'd figure out a way, wouldn't you? It's like the parents who uh, insist that their 12-year-old son has ADHD and can't sit still. And yet, even as they make that claim, that very same son has been sitting nearly motionless for five hours in front of a TV playing video games. He can sit still, it turns out. It's just that a lot of the time, especially in school, he doesn't want to. This is an important point. You know, one of the great to of our age more. is that people have been convinced that they don't have agency. They are not rational, conscious agents making choices and acting freely in the world. The medicalization of every human foible we talked about at the beginning, every bad feeling, every unpleasant emotion plays a big part of this. People don't want to do things or they don't feel incentivized to do them. And then they're convinced that because of some kind of invisible disease, they can't do those things. This is the main reason why I object to depression being categorized as a disease. Depression is a feeling. It's a thought process. You decide how much power it gives, uh, has over your life. Well, I think that there's depression... And then there might be clinical depression. You know, the people that truly have a mental problem. A problem that may need therapy. I hesitate to say medic medication because, you know, I don't really believe in dealing with medication like that. Um, maybe in serious situations of pain. But you know me, I'm more along the natural lines. Uh, but... Um, Depression, I think, is absolutely real. You know, I saw Andrew Tate saying it wasn't real. And I knew, understood the lines he was talking about. But like I said, being someone that has gone through the anxiety, if someone were to say anxiety is not real, I'm like, no, absolutely. And I'm that positive, hey, shake it off, you'll be all right. Positive energy, this and that. You know what I mean? I, it's weird when it's... When you're, when you're someone that is accountable, like I am 100% accountable for my life. That is how I do things. But when you find out that sometimes under a certain amount of stress, that there are things that your body and brain and mind does that you can't control, 
man. And you actually can, but you need to know the tools. And if you don't know the tools, you feel helpless, you don't know what to do, and you can become a victim of your own mental illness, if you will. You decide that. The same cannot be said for other diseases. You have absolutely no power to decide how, say, hepatitis affects you. You can take medicine, you can do other things to try and manage it, but you can't use the force of sheer willpower to mitigate its impact on you. Yet that is exactly what you could do with depression or anxiety or one of these other things. You can get out of your room. Right you can do the depending thing. Depending on the type. Depending on the type, yes. Depending on the type, you absolutely can. You say you cannot do. You absolutely can. There is nothing physically preventing you. You choose not to. But, you know, the real problem with chalking up all this to... Yeah. Another thing that I uh, ran into was um, adrenal fatigue. Some people say it's real. Some people say it's not. Uh, I experienced something where I went to the gym and I could not even lift the bar squatting. It's never happened to me in my whole entire adult life. A few days later, I went to see a physician and he told me, he said, you've got adrenal fatigue. Your adrenal glands are shot. How much stress are you under? Are you okay? And I told him. And I told him what was going on. And he was like, all right. So he told me a few things to do. And it took me months to get my strength back. Months to get my strength back. So, um... Uh, have being someone that has gone through it, adrenal fatigue zaps your strength, your energy, your motivation. It and until you experience it, you don't get it. And I've always been about self motivation, self discipline, getting things done, achieving goals, goal setting, dream building, all that, and to realize. That something I don't know how to fix is keeping me from being the man I want to be. Man, I'm so glad I'm through it. But I am telling you guys, some of this stuff exists in different severity. So, don't fake it. Make sure, you know, you really do have a problem. But don't, you know, people love being victims in today's society. You see it a lot. And they capitalize on it. They make channels out of it. They make TikToks out of it. They make money out of it. And to me, I think it's shameful to, to, to make money out of being a victim. You know what I mean? But, all right, let's continue. You know, depression is that it masks the real epidemic that has long since gripped hold of American society in general, and especially the younger generations. Uh, Zoomers are not depressed. They are apathetic. And this may seem like a distinction without a difference, except that depression is supposedly a chemical function in the brain, even though the chemical imbalance theory has been shown to be bunk. But the apathy choking the life out of the youngest generation is a cultural problem, something ingrained in them practically from birth. This is the thing that ties together bed rotting and depression rooms and quiet quitting and all the rest of it. Not depression, but a general philosophical apathy, a nihilism. They don't care. They don't see meaning or purpose. Some serious problem, no, no question about it. In fact, it's much deeper than any kind of chemical imbalance. And that's not the thing that's led them here, but rather a life full of digital stimulation, yet devoid of any kind of spiritual or moral formation. They don't really want anything. They have no goals, not because they're so deeply fulfilled, but because they're so deeply empty. Hmm. Now, I don't say this applies to everyone in Gen Z, but it's a widespread epidemic, one that extends far beyond their generation, of course. We've all heard these complaints from uh, employers who, who hire young people and you know, say that like they have no useful skills. <laughs> but even worse, they don't care enough to learn the skills. They just don't care. They don't care about anything. Or at least they don't care about any of the right things. <laughs> now, the good news is that this is a problem that can be overcome on an individual <laughs> level, especially. 
It means that all the people lying around complaining that they can't get up, they can't clean their room, they can't go to work, they can't put an effort, they can't move out of their parents' house, they can't become real functioning adults, they can't find true success, they can't find fulfillment in life, they can't do this, they can't do that. They can't. They just can't. All of these people are mistaken. They can absolutely do all of that. They could do it starting tomorrow. They could do it starting right now, this moment. Whether you say you can or whether you say you can't, you're right. Always remember that. They might be depressed, but they can act like they aren't. And the great thing is that in so many cases, the more you act like you aren't depressed, the less depressed you will be. The more you act like you care about the things in life that you should care about, the more you will actually care. The more you work hard, the more you will want to work hard. You just have to start. You have to put one foot in front of the other and start mm -hmm. doing it. And you can start, especially by getting out of bed and cleaning your filthy room. <laughs> and this is why bed rotting and depression rooms no, are both today canceled. <laughs> if you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access <laughs> Ah, he's funny. You cancel somebody daily, don't you? Um, yeah, though. I mean, it's absolutely correct. You have to um, um, for, put it this way. While you're suffering, why don't you also search for a cure to whatever your issue is? And I know some of you might be saying, I am. Keep searching. Implementing things. And it may be, it may take baby steps for you. But coming from someone that's been through what a lot of these people are talking about right now, I'm telling you, taking small steps, doing a little bit more each day, whether it's, hey, look, okay, the, the room is horrible and there's a pile of draws right there. Take that pile, put them in the washer, dry them, fold them, put them in the drawer. That's one thing done for the day. You did something, it's piece by piece. An elephant, you eat an elephant a bite at a time. That's how it is. Do it bit by bit and you get yourself there. And more importantly to me, what I found is that if you're ever in that situation, when you're motivated to achieve something, no matter what it is, I don't know, to get a job, to get a girl to go out with you, to get that body to... Whatever it is, if you have a goal that you're working toward, that makes things much easier to be motivated to handle everything else in your life. You'll notice a lot of people that are uh, uh, successful, that everything is in, in check. You know, their house, their, their garage, their, you know, just everything is flowing, their paperwork, everything cross the T's, dot the I's. But the more cluttered someone's life is, their house is and everything, you'll notice that they've got things cluttered in, in, in their mind and you know stuff like that too. So post comments down below. Let me know what you all thought. Get over to Matt Walsh and follow. Um, very interesting fella, along with him and, <laughs> and Ben Shapiro fighting over aliens right now. <laughs> I swear, you know what's so funny? Matt Walsh seems like a guy that does not believe that aliens exist when i found that he did found out that he did i was shocked i was surprised and ben shapiro seems like a person that does not believe aliens exist and he doesn't <laughs> he also doesn't seem like the type to be religious to me but he is which i find interesting those two have been fighting over whether there's aliens or not i can't wait to find out like i said i really don't trust it because they've been saying it for years anyway We've been seeing the cloudy pictures and this video of a dot going like this and all that stuff. We, we've seen it all for years. And now all of a sudden, though, the only difference is now it's getting national club coverage for real. So either it's some false flag stuff, conspiracy stuff, or they really exist. But until they land at my doorstep, hello, time on madness, we like to talk to you. Then we come in the house and sit down and talk to you. Hey, I ain't believing it. Two million subscribers. Woo!